The Second Cylon War, also referred to as the Cylon Holocaust, marked a brutal and devastating campaign by the sentient robot race of Cylons against their former human masters that inhabited colonial space. Their primary objective was the total annihilation of humanity, targeting both civilian and military infrastructure. Their failure to completely eradicate humanity set the stage for the epic journey of the survivor's search for a new home. In this video, I'd like to examine the fall of the Twelve Colonies, the inherent warnings to humanity from this cataclysmic event, and how it set the stage to explore the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable adversity. Spoiler warning if you are unfamiliar with Ronald D. Moore's Battlestar Galactica. The end of the First Cylon War, prior to the fall of the Twelve Colonies, resulted in a stalemate after a twelve-year-long battle between the two races. The final five, humanoid Cylon refugees from an ancient Earth, brokered a deal with the colonial Cylons, leading to the establishment of a treaty with the humans and an armistice line that delineated Cylon sovereign territory from that of the Twelve Colonies. Over the next 40 years, the Cylons underwent radical transformations with the help of the Final Five, culminating in the creation of eight new humanoid Cylon models. However, in a secret act of rebellion, the first of these models stripped the Final Five of their memories. He strove to teach them a lesson about the repugnant nature of humanity by giving them new identities and placing them among the Twelve Colonies. He then deceived his Cylon brothers and sisters as he erased the identities of the Final Five and programmed the other models not to think about them. The Number Ones then spent over two decades plotting the destruction of humanity as an act of revenge against his creators whom he blamed for making him in the image of their former enslavers. The flesh and blood Cylon models were able to infiltrate human society as they worked behind the scenes to gather intel that would enable them to virtually shut down the entire colonial defense network without firing a single shot. During the armistice, the colonial fleet underwent a period of rearmament in anticipation of a potential Cylon attack. This included the development of the Command Navigation Program, or CNP, which would prove disastrous for the colonial fleet during the Second Cylon War. The Cylons launched their offensive from their home base they called the Colony, a massive structure located just outside the Serenus star system. The first strike targeted the Armistice Station, a diplomatic outpost. Afterward, the Cylon fleet began their assault, launching nuclear strikes on the worlds of the Twelve Colonies. Due to the CNP's vulnerabilities, which had previously been exploited by the Cylons, the computer systems of the Colonial fleet were hacked and disabled, resulting in heavy losses as dozens of Battlestars were destroyed within minutes. Despite the Colonial President's unconditional surrender, the Cylons pressed on with their invasion, deploying Centurions to kill any survivors on sight. With the Colonial fleet in disarray, a counteroffensive was launched, but the effort ended in catastrophic failure and the loss of almost all of the remaining Battlestars. William Adama of the Battlestar Galactica then assumed command of the remaining Colonial fleet, and ordered all ships to rendezvous at the Ragnar Anchorage, a colonial munitions depot and refueling station which orbited in the upper atmosphere of a gas giant. Utilizing older, non-networked Viper Mark IIs, the colonial fleet was able to defend itself from attacks by Cylon raiders. However, their victory came at great cost, with the Galactica suffering damage from a nuclear detonation, and the lives of some 85 crew members were sacrificed as burning ship compartments were depressurized. The Secretary of Education Laura Roslin, who was next in line for the presidency, assumed command of the government shuttle Colonial Heavy 798, which a short time later was renamed Colonial One. Under her direction, a ragtag fleet of civilian ships was then assembled. After the location of their caravan was discovered by Cylons, Roslin ordered all FTL-capable ships in the civilian fleet to rendezvous with Galactica, resulting in the abandonment and subsequent destruction of the remaining sublight vessels. During the resupply efforts at Ragnar Anchorage, the survivors were made to realize the CNP's vulnerability to Cylon hacking. 
As a result, the networking capabilities of all stranded vipers and raptors were disabled. The decision was then made to lead the refugee fleet away from the Serenus star system, with Galactica providing protection. The Galactica then engaged the Cylon forces surrounding Ragnar before jumping away, which bought time for the civilian ships of the fleet to escape. Within the first 24 hours of the initial Cylon attack, nearly the entire human population, totaling over 29 billion souls, had been wiped out. Ultimately, only 50,000 people managed to escape on refugee ships along with the battle stars Galactica and Pegasus. The rapid fall of the 12 colonies in the Second Cylon War serves as a stark reminder of the potential dangers associated with the improper use and over-reliance on technology. In the Battlestar Galactica universe, the very creations of humanity, the Cylons, turned against their creators, leading to catastrophic consequences. The infiltration of the command navigation program by the Cylons exemplifies the perils of placing too much trust in advanced technology, as it facilitated the swift and devastating destruction of the colonial fleet. This cautionary tale highlights the importance of vigilance, ethical considerations, and responsible technological advancements. It reinforces the need to strike a balance between embracing innovation and maintaining a healthy skepticism towards the potential risks and vulnerabilities that advanced technology may introduce. Having witnessed firsthand the devastating consequences of unchecked technological advancements and their over-reliance on it, after reaching their final destination, the survivors of the Twelve Colonies sought to create a new society, built on more harmonious foundations. By embracing a simpler, less technologically driven existence, they hoped to avoid repeating the same mistakes that led to the catastrophic events of the Cylon Holocaust. The Second Cylon War and the cataclysmic fall of the Twelve Colonies provided a powerful narrative backdrop for the series. With humanity pushed to the edge of extinction, the characters were forced to confront their own vulnerabilities and adapt to the harsh realities of their new existence. The immense challenges they faced throughout their journey to find a new home served as a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, even in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds. Through the struggles and triumphs of the survivors, the series artfully demonstrated that despite the darkest of circumstances, hope and determination can pave the way for a brighter future. But I'm curious to know what you think of the Cylon Holocaust. Are there any lessons from humanity's defeat in this event or particular moments in the aftermath of this attack that stand out to you? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe for more Battlestar Galactica and other sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support, and as always, have a very nerdy day.